welcome back to the channel and you know what like life is hard there's so many ups and downs and things like that fortunately there are a few tools that makes life easy and in this video i'm going to share with you one such tool and since if you've been following the channel you know we do a lot of uh, you know courses and stuff like that i introduce you to so many open source projects and uh, cloud native tools the, the landscape is there we have the podcast going on where we get so many amazing folks so check out the links in the description below check out the devops bootcamp playlist and we've done uh, content on kubernetes um, starting from the basics of like linux then about networking and things like that but in this section we're going to talk a little bit more about infrastructure as code okay i'm not going to talk about yaml files if you're one of those folks who does not like to work with yaml files or whatever and if you talk about terraform i did a session on that as well in the introduction to terraform you can check out the open source cafe playlist so over there you know terraform uses its own domain specific language in order to you know do all these all these things so let's drive straight into it right and um, we're going to talk about pulimi in this particular section and how it's going to make your life easy when you're working with infrastructure as code so before moving forward with that, let's talk a little bit more about what it is, right? Infrastructure as code as it is. So it just you know, in a simple language, obviously you can find all the definitions online if you Google, but you, you have your own services or whatever, you have some uh, servers running in the cloud, you have some virtual machines or whatever, some Kubernetes clusters, right? You have some VMs running, you're like, hey, I have like, uh, I want to run four virtual machines, uh, this much amount of cpu this much amount of ram so many other things right so what you do is you put all these configurations in a code format and you give that to your uh, computer or provider or whatever right and they will be like okay kunal is saying i need to run five servers this much amount of cpu this much amount of memory and so on and so forth okay kunal give us this recipe and we will make sure that it happens this is a good practice this is an infrastructure that you are maintaining in a code format okay you want to make some changes you want to add new clusters you know, upscale, downscale, or you know, need to add some more memory or whatever you want to do. You just put it in the code, give that to the, you know, like the platform or whatever, they will do it for you. Okay. But what is the problem? So the problem is that with, with Terraform or whatever, like some of the limitations is, first of all, it's, you know, some other type of language you, you would have to work with, like a domain specific language that Terraform has. And what if you are like, okay, I get it, Kunal, you're saying that, you know, make uh, you're, you're putting it in the sheet or whatever in code format that hey i want let's say four linux uh, you know virtual machines uh, to run okay no problem but what if you want to add some conditions behind it kunal run four virtual machines if this happens otherwise run three virtual machines or something like that right so if you want to add logic okay that's one of the things so how does it help what is it it is pulumi so Pulumi is a, is a great tool and let me just pull up the website so you can see. Here's the website pulumi.com. You can uh, check out the link in the description below and uh, it's an infrastructure as code uh, you know, tool for, uh, for folks. And the way it helps is that you can add logic behind it. And how, how does one do that? You can work with the language of your choice. For example, Python, uh, JavaScript, TypeScript, Golang, Java, whatever you want. Okay, so you can work with the language of your choice and in your language, so now that we're working with programming languages, you know, during complete languages. So you can add conditionals. And when it comes to programming languages, you can also work with IDEs, editors, plugins. When we talk about IDEs, it can help you in testing and so many other things, right? When we talk about Pulumi, right? You can work on every cloud. So 80 plus public, private or hybrid clouds like AWS, Azure, Google, uh, or uh, like your Kubernetes, managed Kubernetes as well. Um, um, where I work like Sivo, we have a, a provider for Pulumi as well. So in the next video, I'll be doing a demo around, around that. And uh, so many languages are supported, as I already mentioned, builders, architecture, right, for containers and uh, serverless or managed services or VMs or whatever you want to work with and for cloud resources, right? Cool. And one more feature that it says over here, it says that, uh, you know, it's for every cloud resource. So that basically means that you can import your existing infrastructure into Pulumi, or if you're using something else, some other you know infrastructure as code format like ARM or, or Terraform, for example, you can convert that as well and use that into Pulumi. So it's like a pretty good like if you already have your existing solutions, you can you know uh, move over to Pulumi in a relatively easy way. Cool. So as you can see, there's a three-step process. You build it up according to your language, whatever you want. So as you can see, Pulumi supports a bunch of languages. You can see that there's JavaScript, TypeScript, Python. 
there's uh, Golang, other tools like OPA, .NET, C Sharp, and then there's Java and you know Kotlin and so many other things, right? So that's what I was mentioning, you know, previously. Like you, you, you get to choose, you know, what you're comfortable with, and uh, if you're the kind of person, you know, who who also likes to work with, let's say, YAML files. So we're not, you know, Polymer is not excluding you with that. It also supports YAML. So if you want to work with YAML, you can, you know, go ahead with that. Um, if you want to you know, work with programming languages as such, you can go ahead with that. So uh, a, little, a, a lot diverse, you know, options are available over here for you to, you know, work with your language of choice, which I think is uh, pretty cool. And also some, so it's also, I believe the, the USP, you know, what you don't get with other tools. I use Python because it's, uh, it has sort of like a, um, what, what do you call it? The pseudo code sort of like syntax, right? But there's obviously definitions and online uh, documentation available for various other languages. And then you deploy it you know, on Kubernetes. I'll be deploying it on Kubernetes and then you can manage it. This is where the testing part comes in. Like it's extremely easy to set up like with CI, CD and things like that. Cool. So languages plus cloud, that is sort of like the overall structure. If someone asks you, what is the whole theme around Pulumi? So language plus cloud is equal to you are better together. Nice little family. All right, cool. So. So you can see for the favorite languages it can be expressive user friendly because you already are familiar with the language of your choice whatever you want ides and with productivity it comes to you know like plugins and things that things like that you can use there's abstraction and you can share it you can reuse it testing is there as i already mentioned linters right and uh, the communities obviously and then when we talk about the infrastructure as code declarative infrastructure as code so you can talk about previewing the changes and the ci cd pipelines and things like that and you can check out the history of the changes and uh, you can enforce some security and uh, compliance uh, best practices as well but these are just like theory theory part you know we, we uh, I don't, uh, obviously like it's uh, giving a good overview but you would get the feel when we start working with the demo so let's get started with that demo time Okay, just as was once we go over the over the over the website, you can see that you know the build part we already discussed about that. See, people writing it in programming languages, Java, whatever you want to, whatever you want to work with. And then we have the deployment part. So you can see that one pipeline for everyone. Application code plus infrastructure code this is what we were talking about earlier, languages plus infrastructure together, and then work with it. So testing and committing and then deploying into your own um, infrastructure, right? Um, and then here we have the manage part. So you know you can manage your cloud applications and then the there's like uh, it, it, it is a uh, it is secure by default and uh, you can see all the changes and the visibility and the timeline uh, like the history part is also available over there that you can check it out cool so here are the benefits we've already already covered that you know and uh, Let's get started with the demo. Now, before we jump into the demo, let's also see how you can sign up. So it's free to use for all individuals and you can check out the pricing section for more information. So as you can see for individuals, if you want to use infrastructure as code for your individual projects, it's free for you to use. And uh, you can get, you'll get, you'll be like getting support for like any cloud and all the languages that I mentioned, uh, state and secret management, unlimited deployments. Obviously you can check out this guide and documentation, but we'll be doing a dedicated tutorial in this video in itself. And if you're a team, an enterprise or your business you can check out more information as well what all these plans have to offer so you can get in touch with them and they would be able to help you out with all the pricing related queries so to get started with the demo you can just click on the sign in button and it would require you to sign in i've already done it so i'm already here but um yeah you can use github to sign in and uh, let's get started okay so once you click on sign in i signed in with my github and here you can see you can check out the github as well you can uh Give it a nice little star or very close to 13,000 stars over here. So here basically I have selected like my dashboard. I've selected like uh, Kubernetes. So I'll be doing it on Minikube, right? But uh, you can choose your own provider or uh, if you're working with Sivo, we have, you know, the uh, the, the Pulumi like, provider for that as well. Um, but it's pretty straightforward, right? Um, I'll, I'll tell you how it sort of like identifies it when you work with Kates and language. I'm just going to choose it as Python just click on next step right we have to install it so brew install uh, install polymy just gonna do that cool so that's gonna take some time and we'll also have to configure kubernetes for it so if you check out the you know 
uh, documentation. So here you can see since we're using Python, we'll be using Pulumi Kubernetes. One thing I'm going to share is this particular thing. So by default, it is going to look for the kube config file uh, in, uh, in the following locations like the environment variable. So if you export your config file and change the environment variable of kube config, as we've done in the previous video, it will then point to that cluster online in other cloud providers or like the mini cube one, which is already over, you know, uh, by default over here. So I have mini cube running on my on my system and I'm just going to install the, you know, pip install this uh, Pulumi Kubernetes. Cool. Right. Um, for other languages also, uh, it's mentioned over here for Node.js and uh, for JavaScript and Golang and stuff. Okay, and once that is done, you are just going to do the Python install, the pip install. So I'm just going to do this because we're going to be coding in Python. So I'm just going to do that. Close this. That's done. And I'm going to click on next. Now I'm going to create uh, a directory and move, like make a project basically, right? There we go. So I'm going to create a directory and I'm going to move inside that project. Now I'm going to create my Pulumi project and the stack. So I'm going to be doing a Kubernetes Python. So there you go. Pulumi new Kubernetes Python. Cool. And it's asking for a token. So I'm just going to go to this website and I'm going to ask for the token. I don't know, I have any tokens. You can create them manually or using Pulumi login. Okay, I can just do Pulumi login then. Or hit enter to use to login using your browser. I can do that. You're logged in, continue to your dashboard. Okay, that looks good. And uh, that looks good. Cool, cool. So we have it here, our first project. A minimal Kubernetes Python Pulumi program. Right? Awesome. And I'm gonna open this up as well in uh, let's say VS Code. Okay, so I just clicked enter. It was showing a default, so the default like first project name, project description, default, stack name, um, dev. I think that's default is fine. Installing some stuff. Creating a virtual environment. So now our new project is ready to go. Cool. Awesome. Now, something you may be asking is Kunal, you know, what is this project name that you have just given? What is this stack thing, right? Uh, how does it relate to Pulumi? So here the, you know, these are just uh, things that will help you organize your Pulumi code. That's the simplest way to understand it. So if you talk about the project that it was asking for us, right? So it can be sort of like a GitHub repository uh, where you can put all your code and things like that. And when we talk about the stack, so the stack can be an instance of that code with a separate configuration. Okay, so for example, I had the project first project, right? It can have like multiple tech stacks like for dev, for production, for testing, right? So one project can have various um, stacks. So I hope that explains this uh, stack thing and the project name, project thing. Okay, cool. Okay, now, no, no, we're not gonna skip anything. All these things that happened, I'm explaining to you line by line. So let's see the files that have been created, right? So you see this pulumi.yaml file, Kunal, what is this? This basically defines your project, as simple as that. So you can name of the project and the runtime and the description of the project and things like that, okay? This main dot, the, the main.py file, this basically is the pulumi program that will define your stack resources, okay? So in this particular thing, if we're talking about Kubernetes, so you can see we did a pip install for this, right? And this is basically just defining a deployment. So you are writing your Kubernetes infrastructure as code in Python. How cool is that, right? So now you can add some, uh, you know, uh, conditions over here and do all sorts of uh, fun things with it. So it's just importing the deployment and, you know, these are just k objects, right? Deployment, we've all learned about deployments before. So it's just, what is this doing? It's just creating an, an Nginx deployment. 
and it's exporting the name of that deployment. That's it. Okay. So this is a particular tech stack. So this is a particular stack for Polymy and we are going to deploy it. Okay. So deploy it. That's no, no worries. Before doing that, I'll just show you how to deploy it. Pull me up. That's it. Do you want to perform this update? Let's see. I will do yes. So what is happening Kunal? So it's saying that you have these, you know, changes and stuff like uh, you have the deployment is here or whatever. So two resources will be plus two resources to create. Okay. So if you want to perform this update, what will happen is that these resources will be created in what Kubernetes because that's what we're working with, right? The cube, uh, the cube cuttle and the cube config thing that I talk, talk to, uh, told you about by default, it's what mini cube, but you can have your own nice. Okay, if I just click on the view live thing. This is my first project, dev branch. It's working, taking some time. Cool. Alrighty, that looks good. Cool. So that's done. And how do we check it? Because we're doing it on Minikube, so I can just say, CTL get all nginx deployment should have been created amazing <laughs> running pretty good the deployment has been created right a few seconds ago how simple was that pretty simple and that's it now you can play around with it and do all, all sorts of things one more thing I want to share is that um, the deployment right that we exported the name that we exported over here in this line number 21 you can see this out as the output as well Okay, cool. All right. Okay, so far so good. So we learned about Pulumi. We set up Kubernetes. We saw some other examples, how to install it, how it creates this, you know, uh, sort of like a structure for us and all these files, what they mean, all the terminologies and everything. Cool. Now, if you already work with Kubernetes, if you work with like YAML files or whatever, obviously, if you're watching this video, so you may already know this will look familiar, right? Deployment, Nginx, and then in the spec, there's our selectors, labels, replicas, and templates, and all these other things. This is sort of like the YAML structure that we have followed. So Kunal, how do we convert a YAML file into this particular, you know, core sample? So obviously there's the documentation for that, but it's pretty straightforward. As you can see over here, you can check out the docs for particular languages, how you can work with your favorite programming language and sort of like convert it from YAML. But there's a, if you, if you just check out the YAML file for this, okay, if I just copy this YAML file for this deployment, just for example, you can actually go to this website, polymy.com slash cube to polymy, right? And I just go to custom and paste it and convert. So the Kubernetes YAML file has been converted to Pulumi code in TypeScript, in Python, in Golang, as you can see over here. How cool is that? Obviously, it is um, like you can do some. You can you know you can make this code a little bit shorter. You can uh, you know do all sorts of things. But you can see you get the idea, right? Same thing that is happening over there. Okay, deployment, you give the name over here, that's fine. And then you give the API version and kind and metadata and all these other things. Okay, metadata, and then you have your spec. How cool is that? Right, so a pattern you can see over here inside this, here in the, in every argument, here you can see API version, every single major tag is itself like an argument. And if you want to add something in it, then you have to create like an object for it. Okay, so this API version kind metadata spec will be inside this argument like that. Spec is here as an argument. And inside spec, if you want to add something, then you will have to make an object. Spec arguments object, object argument object. Okay, so pretty, pretty interesting stuff. Cool. All right. Um, so I believe this is a good one. If you want to see a simple example of Nginx pod, this is how it would look like. Very simple. Just a pod is here. So obviously 
API version kind metadata spec name API version kind metadata spec Kunal metadata has something in it okay then create an object here you can see object for metadata arguments spec has something in it okay create an object for it no problem I hope you are able to utilize the, the pattern over here cool so this was also something I wanted to share if you want to you know get started with it you can try it out you can convert your existing YAML files into Polymy code into various languages and then you can sort of like learn and get get started with it obviously you can join the community as well um, but yeah let's do one more thing let's modify it and make it a little bit more complicated and deploy the changes right okay so I have modified the main.py file now it's basically creating a service to access the nginx deployment previous file had an nginx deployment now it's creating a service to access that we all learned about services and all these other things egress we learned about that um, so now basically what it's doing is that here you can see it's going to require a new config value okay so it's going to require a config value from us and basically the idea with that uh, see here you can see the config so it's going to require a config from us and um, this value the config value is basically going to indicate whether our program is being deployed to minikube or not okay so config dot require bool is minikube is minikube true or false that config we need to pass to it okay so the configuration in in, in pulumi so basically you can set it up Colonel, what is this config thing in pulumi right you may you may be wondering that so various particular stacks that we mentioned previously for one project so we we all mentioned we, we all know that you know one project will have many can have many stacks and every single stack for some variables it may require different value it may require different value for different stacks that can be achieved via configurations in pulumi as simple as that so you can pass it using the pulumi config um, command so in this particular example we are going to set our config which is is minikube so this particular stack requires is minikube config okay we're just gonna set that so we're gonna say pulumi config set let me just uh, copy this so I don't make any typos are we using um, are we using minikube so if you're using minikube set it to true otherwise you can just put it at false we are using minikube true so the config is set now deploy the changes what were the what was the command for that pull me up okay um one thing has changed sort of like you know the feeling you're getting when you're working with git right you do git add git commit and all these other things same thing not exactly the same thing but same theme and same feeling so now the service is defined do we want to do that yep yes i don't even have to do anything i'm just clicking buttons right it's pretty simple to work with it what is it going to print out by the way if we check out the export so you can see it will print the public ip okay We're using egress ingress um so, in, so it's going to print out the public ip for that this is it cool so what we can do is first of all i'm going to check for or i can just do it in uh, i can make another 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 window no problem okay so here i can say cube ctl get service should have created it here we go we have it okay cool so one thing i want to notice i want you to you know, notice over here is that when we're working with minikube right so it does not support load balancer so when we, we have just deployed it using minikube so we can just port forward it so i can say kubectl so we want to access this right we want to access this cluster um port forward port forward what my service this one right and i can just say port 8080 port 80 okay okay and now i can just access it i can just do a curl command there you go, Nginx, yay. 
working pretty fine very cool very cool stuff all right so that's uh, basically about it how cool is that right and very simple stuff good work you can also see the history thing I mentioned about activity in the in your dashboard. This is ab update number two. I just made it a few seconds ago. You can check it out. The details and everything and configs and all these things can be mentioned over here. Okay, service was created, right? It's very simple. Okay, I'm gonna stop this. And what do we do next? Destroy the stack. Okay, so we wanna see. We have seen how we have made the changes and all these other things. Now we need to clean things up. Okay, so now you need to destroy the stack. You can just say Pulumi destroy. Make sure you're inside the project folder. So it will give you some information. Do you want to destroy it or not? Yes, I do. Okay, so this is this has destroyed the resources okay it has removed the resources as you can see over here but what if you want to remove the stack in itself okay so if you want to remove the stack as you can see it so it says over here pulumi stack remove dev stack pulumi stack remove dev so this will particular this will remove the stack entirely from our service we have to confirm this okay and all the history will also be gone, I believe. So confirm this by typing dev. Okay. Done. It's been removed. So your stack is gone. Nice. That was Pulumi. So now you can explore stuff. In the next video, I'll show you something with the, you know, um, uh, with the with Cibo as well, the Pulumi providers. You can check out other resources and all these other things. If I try to refresh this, you will see that it's uh, it's gonna be gone. See, dev is gone dev is no more all right very simple so many great resources don't worry i'll leave all the links in the description below so you can check it out and it's it's, it's very cool right i mean you can check out you know the uh, huge number of companies using it and utilizing it so this is sort of like my take on the um, simple tutorial uh, like easy to understand one if you have any questions obviously leave those down in the comment section below i will be doing some amazing uh, live streams with folks from fully as well Shout out to Raw Code. Check out Raw Code on YouTube. Um, and we'll be doing some Twitter spaces as well. So, yeah, that's uh, basically about it. You can... Uh, one last thing I'd like to uh, share about is you can uh, you can follow along. You can join the... You, know, you can follow them on Twitter. And you can join the Slack community. And obviously, there's the YouTube channel and GitHub repository, as you can see. What I already mentioned. That's basically about it. It was pretty simple. And uh, you can take a screenshot and you can learn about it. On the, in the documentation obviously i'll do some more tutorials um explore play around with it there's the online uh, online conversion tool that you can use as well and uh, write a blog about it uh, if i find some nice blogs i'll send you out some swag we have the we have the hash node challenge going on so you can you know basically learn and share and win some exciting prizes like iphones and uh, things like that we have tracks in the devops track basically you can uh, you can write about pulumi and you can win the monthly grand prize for this is uh, we are giving up some cash prize and some weekly swag and everything. So write down your blog and we'll reach out to you for some swag if you end up winning. And that's basically about it. Do share it on socials if you liked it. And uh, if you have any feedback in the comment section below. And I'll see you in the next one. Have a great day. Bye.